Hello, Natasha. Hello, Damien. It's the Lowbrow Lowdown. Um, all right. Well, hello. Well, hello, Damien. Happy We're, Friday. Yes. Oh, it's the end of a week. Oh, a my gosh. Week. It's been 87 years. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it felt like it. Um, although an episode did come out last week, we should... Oh, hold on. Welcome to the Lowbrow Lowdown. <laughs> Welcome to the Lowbrow Lowdown. Uh, we are reading pandemic-themed literature, so you don't have to. We're up to episode seven now, um, and we're going to be... We, we've taken a bit of a... a um, Fast and the Furious 28 hairpin turn kind of... <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we didn't read um, Terrible <laughs> Erotica this week. We, we've read a zombie book. We uh, have. We have the first, the first in a trilogy of zombie books. The first books. in a trilogy. We're not, well, you know, I'm not sold that we're going to read all of them because they are longer than our normal reads. They um, are. But a few episodes ago, Damien and I both discovered that we both like zombie literature slash movies slash TV shows. So it felt like a, when we saw it, it felt like a natural kind of, Yes, we thought we'd accept. A way yeah. for us to go, particularly after we both decided we could not read another bad <laughs> sex scene. <laughs> so bad. They uh, are just, they are so bad. So bad. So bad they're sometimes good, but often not. No, look, I, I, look, I don't want to, yeah. this no, is no. now an MJ Edwards Appreciation Club because yeah, really is, isn't it? she wrote the most interesting sex scenes because they were hot dogs. They the were the most dogs. surprising. <laughs> Um, so, they, look, they, while an episode did come out last week, there was a, a week off. And to explain that, when I was meant to be editing that, my building got quarantined because there was a That's miscommunication right. between the Department of Health and our building manager who thought she had to quarantine the whole building. Turned out she didn't. Um, oh. But in the mess, I just didn't get around to editing the episode. So, we just took a week off. We t- I think we needed a week off. It's been a bit of a week. Like, we yeah. had an earthquake. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Remember? Was yeah, it this God. week or last week? I don't even I know think, anymore. I think it was last week. <laughs> I think I was, it was last week, yeah. I I um I was on um a Zoom call with my study group and it was mm. one of them is in Gippsland and so we watched oh, it wow. kind of travel like they were like, Oh, something's happening and then it happened to us. Well it was oh, kind of watched goodness. it travel across the state. Yeah, no, it was amazing. And you know what I did? Did you, what did you do when you when the first when the when the earth shook for you, Damien, what did you do? I just sort of pay, like walked in circles around my house not knowing what to do and then I went out <laughs> onto the balcony. <laughs> You're going to love what I did. Oh. I, well, pretty much the same thing. Spot the people who did not grow up in an earthquake-prone country. I looked at my hangers, all of my clothing shaking, and I thought, oh, no, I've got to go upstairs and log into work to see how everyone is. No. <laughs> so I did that. Uh, and everyone's like, oh, my God, I rushed outside with my children. It's like, oh, yeah, that's probably what I should have done. But, I mean, I don't have children, but I mean, we're on the sixth floor. Outside. I don't know what we would have done. I like, don't know. Oh, just, I wasn't getting in the lift. Oh, hell no. I, I mean, the oh stairs God. are probably reinforced in some way. Right? Um, oh, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't bad enough for my building to fall down. No, no. Um, but it was a very exciting moment. And, you know, for 10 glorious minutes, we thought and spoke about something other than the coronavirus pandemic. Yeah. So it felt really great. It was like, oh, my goodness, an earthquake, how exciting. <laughs> something <laughs> different. <laughs> something different. Oh, dear. But we digress. Um, we digress a lot. So, so <laughs> um, to introduce our book, this is a three-part series, a book series called The 2021 Vaccine Zombies, mm. and book one is called Death Vaxes. Death Vaxes. <laughs> and I imagine that this person expects – so, I'm going to read the blurb from Amazon. It's quite long, <clears throat> so – Yeah, I might give up halfway through. Yeah, get your lines, everyone. <laughs> I can't do this, but I imagine it's read in that kind of <laughs> just when you thought it was safe to go outside kind of voice. Exactly the voice, yes. Um, I can't do that, so you're going to hear it in a lilting <laughs> homosexual voice instead. <laughs> um, so, Interrupted by giggling. Um, <laughs> <Soz>. <laughs> I, 
I did not mean to say just when, but it does start with just when you. Um, so just when you thought it could, could, couldn't could possibly get worse, Chuck Huey isn't exactly what you'd consider an alpha male. But a few months... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you're going to hear this, like, I'll just <laughs> just this kind of groan of, oh, fuck's sake. Um, but a few months after getting his COVID-19 vaccination, his world changed. It all started when Chuck came face to face with a zombie. That oh, was- it didn't, but go on. That was strange enough, obviously, but when she demanded his blood, specifically his blood, the train went completely off the rails. Oh. It turned out the vaccine affected... Oh, yeah, he gives away the whole story. <laughs> oh, it's... Re- yeah, I mean, you, yeah, he does. <laughs> they out, all do in these They do, blurbs. yeah, they're like, here's the blurb that tells you everything that happens. Mm. Here's it, a plot and a twist. It turned out the vaccine affected people differently. Most were fine having no issues at all, but some were cursed with genetic alterations that brought something far worse to the world than the pandemic. Two major classes of those affected were death faxers and vax hunters. Mm. Uh, (laughs) Death faxers were powerful, ruthless, and they could think and plan like regular people, only with more sinister intentions. They're also the zombies, like, Yeah, they're the zombies. That's just, yeah. (laughs) Vax hunters were people who became stronger, faster, and were given an insatiable desire to hunt and kill zombies. The the How class convenient. system of vaccine genetic mutation things was really confusing and hard to but follow. I found it extremely confusing. I mean, it was spelled out in quite a lot but of detail. It did but make, it didn't seem to importantly, make any sense. it made really hot women really oh. attracted to nerdy men. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. I feel like there's some <laughs> very sort of some autoethnography maybe informing <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> this piece. Correct. <laughs> um, right. Oh, look, it, I'm going to try and finish it. Yeah. I'll it's go only quickly. Two more paragraphs. It's more than two paragraphs. <laughs> oh, no, I just scrolled down. Sorry. <laughs> Four more paragraphs. Chuck's blood marked him as a vax hunter, but not just any vax hunter. Chuck. <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> I'm sorry. Chuck was the king. His numbers were off the charts. Off the charts. That made him the guy who you'd never expect to save the world end up being the guy everyone hoped could save the world. It'll take more than genetic alterations to allow Chuck to do that, though. He'll have to put past... He'll have have to put put the past past behind him. Sorry, I can't read. Uh, (laughs) Embrace the powers he's been given gather an army of hunters, and push everyone to work together to eradicate the zombie threats with extreme prejudice. If so Chuck he becomes a manager. He does. He becomes a middle <laughs> manager. <laughs> he is the front-end manager of Safeway, and the zombie hordes are trying to buy all the toilet paper. If Chuck oh. fails, well, the zombies will be nom-nom-nomming on everyone. I'm not reading the last bit because it's stupid. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it's really dumb. If I'll you like post apocalyptic If you like post apocalyptic <laughs> tales filled with zombies, action, laughs, fun and snark, you'll love this crazy look into a world of vaccine induced mayhem. <sighs> now before we pass judgment. <laughs> um a spoiler alert. We have passed judgment already. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> we will be talking about the plot of this book, not in as much detail as we normally do, because it's no. It's long. Long. Well, like it's not like it's not it's a not long, long book. book, but it's it's longer than our normally. Reads, normally, but- these things are like four pages long. <laughs> <laughs> this is this has 42, 40, 44 chapters. Oh yeah, it was long. It was yeah, so, short oh, chapters. It's like the Da Vinci Thank Code. You just churn through it, but yeah. I mean, I was still reading this twenty minutes ago because I, I kept putting also it off. Was reading it twenty minutes ago. <laughs> so, I just did not. Well, yeah. I've also been on strong painkillers because I've got a sore back, so I blame that. Not, yeah. not because the book was boring. I just kept also, getting distracted by other things. <laughs> um, so my theory is this is being written for 12-year-old straight boys yes. who like Family Guy. <gasps> oh because, like, it is, yeah. yeah. It, like, and I liked Family Guy when I was – I don't think it was out when I was 12, but, you know, when I was, like, 14 or whenever it came out when yeah. I was a teenager. 
Mm. And like, I, I get that. I can mm. see the humor. I can see that the formula, how it's that, you know, the jokes stack on each other. Oh, they are. And, and they're juvenile jokes. Yeah. Like, I mean, you and I are juvenile. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Love and dick jokes for fuck's sake. <laughs> um, sorry, uh, but yeah, these are just you could just imagine the cracked voices of these adolescents, yeah, <laughs> screaming fact, these jokes to each other. <laughs> maybe that's the voice I'll do when we get to my exit. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um. I read I read heaps of reviews for this book because it was just like, oh shit, what am I gonna say? What are other people saying? And so many people, I all gave them all gave uh, all gave five star reviews and said, Oh, they thought it was hilarious, a rip roaring read. Um and it wasn't. <laughs> I didn't find it. So I think did he get all of his mates to send reviews in or <laughs> No, I, I think it's teenage boys. I really yeah, do. Okay. I, I, it really strikes me as just hitting that audience. I can, I can see my brothers. I have four okay. brothers mm. who are straight, and I can see them still finding elements of this funny. And that's yeah. not to throw shade at them. It's just you know, no, no. that's I mean, straight. I that's straight male culture. I was expecting to find it really amusing. And yeah, I didn't. Did you find any of it funny? Like n- not things. in the way it was intended. Mm. Like I yeah. found, I found there were obvious jokes. Yeah, the, the jokes weren't the thing I was laughing at. I no. was laughing at, you know, I mean, I had to sort of because I was writing notes as I was reading through it and highlighting them. And for anyone who doesn't know, I teach a range of communication subjects, mm. including creative writing. Mm. And there were a lot of points where I just wanted to write in the margins, show, don't tell, because like <laughs> it was always like we, they, uh, Chuck and Amber exchanged a sarcastic look. And I was like, well, what the fuck is that? Mm. Like, don't tell me that they did that. Show me what that looks like or show me mm. how they're behaving like mm. it just it makes me think of a sarcastic. Yeah, yeah like it just, don't just tell me what they like. Mm. Don't they tell me they said it they sardonically. Over quite a lot of problematic. Uh, they the the author glosses over some uh, some problematic behaviour that's addressed. Like so, uh, so the two. There are three so three protagonists. Three protagonists, and then, and then two side stories. Two, yeah, of antagonists. <laughs> of antagonists. Um. Oh, so there's. Chuck Huey is the main character. He's the he's the king. He's the super zombie killer. He's the super nerd. Yeah, he's a zombie geek. killer. Um, his best friend Buddy, who's another geek, and Amber, who is this gorgeous girl, uh, who used to go out with Chuck, or they went on two they dates. Went on two and dates. He followed her home to make sure she was safe, but stayed outside her apartment for three hours. And then the rest of the book, like, we're not going to go into a lot of detail on the plot because there's just no time. No, no. The rest of the book is, like, these constant reminders of, oh, no, I'm not creepy. I just really care. And her coming around and realising that he's actually a good guy. He's a good guy. And, and I'm just like. Yeah, he does really care. He wasn't just being clingy. I mean, he fucking was. Sorry, swearing. Oh, this has an explicit rating. It it was fucked. It It was fucked. I I was just reading it, going, "Oh, you're trying to justify this behaviour, and there's there's no justification. Like, if you follow a woman home because you're worried about her, seek therapy. Like, if you are genuinely worried about her, yeah, like, I mean, walk her home with her knowledge, with her permission, and permission. Uh, don't. Follow her home and then loiter outside her building for three hours. But no fucking reason. Like he <laughs> no was worried reason. about her. It's like, well, she's an adult. She lives in this city, and and she's home now. So bug her off, and don't think that that's okay. And 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 it was described as clingy rather than stalky. Yeah, they, and they sort of everyone kept saying, "Oh, that's pretty creepy," and he's like. Oh, I guess it could come across that way. It's like, no, it doesn't come across that way. It is. like <laughs> This is, oh, man, listen to women, Jesus. It just, All right. If you're yeah. a man listening to this, do not follow yeah. women home. No. If there's believe one thing them when you they take say from you're being an ass. Um, and um, don't try and justify it. 
So there's so so we've got Buddy and Amber, and they all so, so they're all at a pizza the place. Vaccine. They've all had the COVID vaccine, and yeah. they but Buddy, you know what's his name? Chuck notices a grey faced woman kind of <laughs> looking weird out on the street, and yeah. I, the long and short is he names her Hecate. Hecate, yeah, mm-hmm. um, and then refers to her as that for the rest of the e- yeah. exchange. Yeah. Mm. She has noticed him because he has blessed blood, and then mm. it, there's this whole confrontation. They can't use doors with latches on them, and I still <laughs> am not quite sure what they mean by latch. If it's one of those door, like it's a long door handle, and you turn it rather than a doorknob. So this makes less sense to me. Well, like, see, it did make more sense to me when they when when it was explained why they couldn't use doors that made with latches. that still made less sense to me i couldn't okay. quite comprehend <laughs> so they put door what? handles on the back of their heads to keep their skulls open and this created a genetic memory in all zombies have i misunderstood this entirely oh i thought that they were cured oh god no i i thought that the door latch was somehow used to hurt them and they were all scared of it. i don't fucking know no i don't Oh, I don't this want to is re-read how much the book. <laughs> <laughs> I got to the end. It was like, "There's no way now I'm doing a second <laughs> I skimmed through it just before. I was like, "Oh god, this is terrible." Okay, for some reason that Damien and I have both forgotten, they <laughs> don't <laughs> like doors. They can't. For some reason, they're scared of doors, with door latches, latches. but um, they're fine with doors with handles and push doors as well. Yeah, but they and so they don't open the doors. Um, and Hecate ends up throwing a dead body through the door rather than open the door. And so everyone runs. They end up mm. in a dead end and quickly realize that the blessed blood means that they're superheroes. And mm-hmm. Chuck punches a hole through a wall because he's the strongest. And the other two punch the wall and dent it, but also break their hands. But their hands immediately heal. Yes. There's a lot of convenient Science. A lot of convenience. I mean, it's convenient that all three of them who knew each other ended up with similar superpowers. Yeah. Um, and he was the leader because he's the nerdiest of them all. Um, uh, look, and, and, this they, whole- and they decided really quickly what the problem was. Oh, she must be a zombie. Yeah. It's just, and I was like, it's, oh, that wasn't really well explained why. It's this. That thing of, you know, there's like an exposition bot and there's just someone sort of going, oh, and so this must mean this and this means this. I can't be a vampire because even though she wants blood, she must be a zombie and, oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Confrontation. Turns out the police that Hecate killed and the woman she threw through the door come back to life. Mm. One of the police officers' heads was chopped off and he reconnects it as a zombie and so Chuck punches holes in their heads. (laughs) And their brains fly across the city. It chunks of That made me laugh. <laughs> Just like getting punched in the head and their brain popping out of their head and flying in, in his head, landing in a pot of chili. Oh, that's right. Oh, yuck. And it reminded one of them, it reminded Buddy that he was like, oh, yeah, we could go back to the diner and get some pizza. Yeah, oh, no, that was something else. Anyway. No, no, that's it. I, it, it was something oh, that like was that. They're like, popper. oh, we're hungry. Yeah. Um, then mm. they go and see their friend Brent, Brent, Brent. Um, who's a dick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the description of Brent is that guy at a party who you're like, oh, yeah, I'm really interested in whales. Oh, did you know that whales murder 50,000 people a year? And also, and you're just like, yep, no. Brent. They'd be called Brent too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sorry you know, to Brent. all the Brents out there. <laughs> Um, um and so but, but Brent, Brent worked on being, the vaccine. Yeah, Brent worked on the vaccine. So that's how come he has access to this lab that's got um vaccine research and 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 all of the results that explain all of these different types mm, of reactions. Very convenient. Um, Again, very convenient. And um, importantly, Brent is the subset of vaccine people who their genetics interact with the vaccine by <laughs> making them explode. And luckily they arrive and he explains this just as he explodes. Just as he explodes, and and they're called the, those people are called poppers. Like there oh. is a hierarchy to these. So there's poppers, there's vax hunters, there's fast zombies, there's sleepers, there's sloths. Yeah, there was uh, it, there was like a whole email that. Oh, that's right. Explained them all. Written by somebody who's never read a professional email <laughs> in their life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
this shit gets FOIable. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I'm sort of sitting there going, well, firstly, we wouldn't be putting this in writing in this way. Also, <laughs> this is likely something that would be cabinet incompetence. <laughs> Yes, correct. Um, oh, spot the comms professionals. <laughs> yeah, former public servant. Um, mm-hmm. Current public servant. <laughs> um, it, yes, and so it explains that they that it, as part of their um, reactions to the vaccine, Chuck has this desire to dress in eighties activewear, like with yes. bands and wristbands and. Um, Which then leads to the sort of awkward objectification of the woman who's now, because she's been vaccinated, desperately attracted to nerds, that mm. she also dresses in active wear and is not it's wearing a very, bra under a loose, no, like, see-through top. And mm, um, yeah, she has to go change because he can't focus. Yeah. yeah it's infuriating. <laughs> so, brow. Yeah, so he, he dresses in comfortable activewear. With, with headbands that stop sweat going into her, his eyes and her manifestation of the vaccine effect is to dress in skimpy, revealing clothing mm. for other people's For eyes. like a Fonda-esque Olivia Newton-John mm. physical mm. kind of vibe. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, they, they ogle her and say that and make it very clear that their penises will be too distracting unless she wears something longer and so she goes and gets something that covers her up more. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that's how that's how it works. Fucking hell! Um, <laughs> <laughs> so with, they with head Brent's to key the card, lab. they go to the lab. Oh, should, yeah, they head to the lab. They meet um, a scientist called Anya. She also dresses in tight clothing, but not because of the vaccine. No, she already did she, that. She already had a she. No, she she had she that body, like that. and she just had to. She just had to. Who wouldn't if she looked like that? Like, hmm. Yeah. Um, Anya's also attracted to nerds and instantly hates Amber because they are both attractive women. And I don't know if you knew this about the laws of science, but attractive <laughs> women hate each other because they're competing for the men. Um, sorry, I've already forgotten the author's name, but fucking hell, mate. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just like, let's oh, write no. one-dimensional women who... <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, what's his name? The writer's name? Someone John something or other. Something, I don't know. What did we say? <laughs> we didn't even write it down. <laughs> what did we even say? <laughs> shit. Uh, oh, shit, I didn't write it in the notes. Hold on, I've um, got the cover of the book. John P. Log- <laughs> Log- Log- Logsdon? Logsdon. <laughs> that sounds not real. <laughs> um, I should say the, you know, what I assume has been made from stock images picture oh, of the character oh, in the front of the book <laughs> <laughs> is a man in a singlet. Wearing really big tinted glasses, a headband, and what is clearly a wig. Mm, mm. Like a bad party wig. It's like yeah. it's a bit Amy Winehouse. It's like a beehive. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was looking at that picture going, I don't like this at all. Um anyway. So they head so they're at the lab, they meet Anya, she's dressed in she falls in love with buddy and is consoling him for some reason. But also she, as the only surviving scientist, is the only one who knows how to take their blood, assess mm. their powers, and then boost mm. their powers. It's amazing. She can just do these things. It's not explained in any way, um, and, and it seems to happen very fast. So they get these amazing superpowers. This is my excerpt. Sorry? This is my excerpt. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, well, she's like, assess I will, them. I'll and head over to you then. <laughs> and a little explainer to my excerpt, it's because this is the kind of pinnacle of the Family Guy style humour, joke stacked on top of a joke stacked on top of a joke. Mm. Um, and perhaps if it was more clever, maybe would have been funny. Mm. But I think is funny in... <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> so, he's just been given the um, the... Booster. Injection, the booster, and <laughs> this is his immediate reaction. Well, I groaned. That's a kick in the berries. And it was, or felt like it anyway. Literally, the moment she'd given me the shot, it was as if someone had drove a steel-toed boot right into my precious pals. Pain oh. radiated through the entirety <laughs> of my body, making me want to crawl into a corner and whimper until I passed out. Sorry, <laughs> Anya said. Everyone we enhanced said the same thing. They said it felt like getting kicked in the berries, Amber questioned. Not those exact words, no. 
but it was the same sentiment. Now stand still. I heard a seething hiss for a few seconds before Amber said, Ah, hell, that's a punch in the, that's, that's a punch to the chest pillows. <laughs> she felt it next to me. Hold on, I'm going to go to the next page. <laughs> We were both breathing <laughs> rapidly, wrapped it up in our own personal world of anguish. I don't really want to do this, Buddy said, sounding worried. He pro- probably should. We probably should have been made to go first. It doesn't look fun. It's not sugar, Anya told him, <laughs> but it will help keep you safe in the long run. The pain only lasts for about five minutes. Five minutes? Crap. Okay, I'll do it if you think it's uh, it's important. It is, she said. Now don't move. Five seconds later, he shrieked and bellowed, Damn, that's an acid injection into your pee hole. <laughs> like, so this is the joke that he's stacking. This- it's just like, oh, yeah, I can see a 12-year-old, like, going, naughty words. Oh, he yeah. said, she said, chest pillows. That's hilarious. But, yeah. These, but the, it- the people who would like this book would just die at fart jokes. Yeah. <laughs> And sometimes fart jokes are funny, but they've got to be clever. Mm. Like, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I sort of, I'm trying to sort of, that's my except, but I'm trying to sort of use that as a mindset to go, do you know what? I'm not a 12 year old boy. This yeah. maybe isn't this, for me. Like, I'm going to read it to oh, film. Absolutely. But- Look, and, and that, that's a good way to approach a lot of reading that you don't necessarily enjoy. It's like, well, I'm not the audience. Yeah. Um, no, I am not the intended audience of this book by <laughs> any stretch, which is annoying. Like, why won't people make, uh, write a really good, like train to Busan style book about zombies, mm. um, because I love zombie films. Yeah, and they used to be allegories that. for that's, communism that's... and you know consumerism and mm. war and all sorts of things. You know, um, mm. and now I can't think of his name. Ramirez was this incredible filmmaker that kind of pioneered the zombie genre and created this, you know commentary on the world and on Vietnam and on these incredible things. And now we've got like dick jokes and like, (laughs) yeah, there's a place for a zombie comedy, but. I'm not sure that this, this isn't uh, as comedic as I think the author had intended. Do you know, there is a zombie film that shamefully makes me laugh that is pitched at this audience. It's called the Scout's Guide to, oh, the Scout's Guide to Zombie, the Zombie Apocalypse. I feel like I've heard of this. And it kind of has the same oeuvre as this book, mm. but is just like, I don't know, like, you know, had Hollywood money. So, like, it's just. And there's, and I think, um, <laughs> I think my favourite zombie book is, um, oh, dear. You know how, uh, I think it's something like Jane. No, oh, it's Pride a and re- Prejudice and Zombies. Pr- yeah, 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 yeah. I think <laughs> it is. Um, it is very enjoyable. Um, it's enjoyable. I can never and remember the the exact. You know, the famous quote. You know, a zombie in possession of brains is in want of more brains. <laughs> yes, that's a really yeah. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it's quite beautiful. Zombie a couple. God, I cannot say that word. Apocalypse. Um, to give you an idea, there's a scene in that where. Um, someone is falling from a window and the only thing they have to grab onto is an old man zombie's penis and there's <laughs> like a, a stretching scene. <laughs> and it, it's stupid, but it's also funny. <laughs> I um I did a lot of uh, oh, a lot a lot of googling about um uh oh wait, no no you something you said the, the other week about uh, uh conspiracy theorists and Zombie, like I am legend. Was it you telling me about? This I was am not legend? me. Oh, okay. So, now, my excerpt was probably a little bit back about um when they rocked up to Brent's place to um find out what happened in the lab and what happened to all the zombies and and Buddy was going on about conspiracy theories and I thought and Chuck had a bit of a rant about. He was not a fan of conspiracy theories and went into saying, now don't get me wrong, everyone is prone to believing in conspiracies. We're hardwired that way. I don't think that people are hardwired to believe in conspiracy theories. 
but I know that some basic fact-checking would stop 99.9% of them in their tracks. By way of example, contrary to what people believe, redheads descending from aliens are silly, like he's mansplaining conspiracy theories mm. to us. <laughs> the earth being flat is nonsensical, done <laughs> at best. It's like, oh. Dinosaurs building the pyramids in Egypt is hilarious and lizard people running the world is ridiculous. I mean, that's a nod to a current mm. Q thing. Um, it would be pretty cool though. And one of his favorites is that the belief is the belief that the Beatles never existed. Um the reason I liked that it well, liked, chose that excerpt is it it uh, uh, um, so it feeds into you know the, this book, like many zombie books and movies, or many zombie stories, beginning do begin with a plague or a vaccine gone wrong, and that's what this one starts with. And there's World War Z. Mm. Yeah, that's that. That's a plague that starts from a global pandemic that originated in China, um, <laughs> and. One of the part of the story was the quarantine efforts by some countries were rejected and derided by other countries, and that led to the pandemic just getting bigger and bigger. Um, but there was sorry, <laughs> I keep interrupting Damien. Um, I am legend apparently is being picked up by anti vaxxers because they're reviewing this film that was made um, you know 15 years ago through a COVID lens. <laughs> And they're asking if people, if the movie was set in 2021 and if people had turned into vampires that kind of look like zombies as a result of getting the COVID vaccine, like they actually. But it's fiction. Like, it's, it's also fiction. based, like it's a remake <laughs> of another film, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's got nothing to do with COVID. But um, I think that uh, uh, Reuters had to put out a fact check article saying it is fiction. It's not real. Um, and the, I think the screenwriter, I, look, I looked this up, the screenwriter had to tweet out that the film was fiction and to say that the COVID-19 vaccine does not turn people into zombies because apparently there are people that do believe this. Also, I just checked. It's a remake of The Omega Man from 1954. Oh <clears throat> like, you know, and the story better. slightly changed and things like mm. that, but... Yeah, it's like and there's and there's and there's I, think there's I I went digging even further. There's a page or something on the CDC website that says turning into a zombie or a vampire is not on the list of vaccine side effects. Fuck's sake! I know. And this is the thing about your excerpt and this kind of oh, you know, just a little bit of fact checking. If a little bit of fact checking could solve this, it wouldn't we be wouldn't a problem. We wouldn't be in the position where we are now with so many people rejecting the vaccine. I will track it down, but there was a paper, a study just released about um, people who believe in vaccines and they sort of tested their critical reasoning and critical faculties and found that you, the more likely you were to believe in conspiracies, the lower your critical reasoning is. Mm -hmm. um, and they, I was sort of reading up on a report on the paper um, mm -hmm. just because it came across um, – um, and it said, this builds on a previous paper and I need to find it because they were like, where the most, like the thing that's most important to conspiracy theorists is feeling special. Like it's oh, all about God. ego and that mm. they've, I'm, I'm special. I worked it out and you didn't and you're a sheep and I'm mm. not. And it's like, yeah, like feeling special is like not enough. <laughs> no, we, I mean, we all want to feel special and part of a, Belief system, I guess. I don't. Oh, I don't know. But maybe we are hardwired. Like you know, people believe in religion and all sorts of things that, mm. um, <clears throat> you know, and not to conflate those two things, but there is like a, a sense of, you know, we're getting Long. into heaven and you're not. And some yeah. religions, it's yeah. there's a limited number of planets that you get after you die, and if you <laughs> want to get a planet, you better join us soon. Mm. Uh, mm, and. Yeah, like maybe this is where they're kind of – this is a thing that's kind of hardwired into it and some people mm. interact with it dif in different ways, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't know what point I was really making, but it was to say, oh, it was just interesting that 
this writer thought that, I mean, yeah, by, I mean, I don't know what the writer actually believes, but he, his character I says him up. He all, seemed reasonably normal. Chuck. I uh, know the, what, John, the writer. He seems normal. I didn't look him up. Uh, his, oh. his Twitter feed was like, not crazy. Oh, good. Lots okay. of memes, but they were like memes hmm. that were not crazy. Hmm. So I'm just not sure what he's trying to. I don't know. I think he's got a very particular demographic. Maybe yeah, that's maybe true. this is like you know his way of reaching those twelve year olds that are prone <laughs> to conspiracy theories. Conspiracies. Well, you know, teenagers are very prone to that sort of stuff. They Particularly agree. straight men. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> true. Every fucking physio I get. Yeah. It's just oh, like, really? oh, let's, oh can, if someone has a physio who does not want me to get Bitcoin, uh, we're so off anyway, track. Anyway, we really have gone off topic, haven't we? <laughs> um, what we have ignored through this whole thing. So, they're getting their new powers. Um, yeah, yeah. Chuck is now telepathic mm. and reads Anya's mind and finds out that she's going to double cross them. And what <laughs> we've forgotten is that there's a whole B storyline of a Nixon. There's a whole B storyline. Nixon. Is we, we don't know. Bumbling criminal overlord who is oh a zombie. Oh my god, he's such a fool. Who is also like so soulless and evil, but also when Kurt is a fucking idiot, he's like, Oh, I'm sorry, Kurt. Do you understand he's, now? Are you yeah, okay? He's his bumbling sidekick, like <laughs> yeah. literally a dickhead henchman. <laughs> um, but Nixon is also. Amber's ex-boyfriend. Yes. He stalked her. Oh, my God. How did this all happen? Oh, my God. It's such a weird coincidence. They're all somehow connected. And the, he's – see, he's the he's the bad man, but mm. Chuck's not because not all men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chuck's the nice guy. <laughs> this book is a not all men <laughs> fucking manifesto. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> not all zombies. Um, um, so, yes. So, Nixon is trying to – Conduct a Zoom <laughs> conference with all the others on the <laughs> And they're very funny. <laughs> that was I funny. That was funny. I really enjoyed that and I felt it in my soul when <laughs> Texas Tim couldn't fucking get the Zoom to work. And <laughs> Oh, my God. Is, is my audio working? <laughs> Can and- you hear me? I can't hear you. Everything's gone black. <laughs> and everyone's talking about you. Look at your output microphone, Jesus. And then one of them started having a wank. <laughs> Was that politician that did that? No, no it was, was a some- journalist. Oh, was it? Yeah, he was. Did he work for like the New York? Yeah, it was someone something. really senior, wasn't it? Yeah, really. Just had a tug on the screen. Yeah, I, I can't look. I, I'm not. We I'm not. Need- I'm not proclaiming anything. But just if you are on a work call, if you are on a computer what? that you use for work, it's not your porn computer. <laughs> You should, oh they should be separate things. A <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, bit of life <sighs> advice to all the 12 year olds reading this book mm-hmm. have, yeah, a separ- some- <laughs> have a separate, have a separate device. Computer. If you have yeah. like an iPad, <laughs> like that you don't use for anything school or work related, <laughs> use that for your porn because it will get yeah. destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. So Nixon and Kurt. Nixon is the this idiot mastermind um, who is just so stereotypically evil, and he's so rather than try and gather all of the different fast zombies forces together, he arranges a meeting on Dark Island. Oh yeah. And so how did they all come? To, didn't this just happen? That. <laughs> But also, his instructions, go to any travel site, type in these random numbers, and you'll get a free flight to Dark Island. Who is funding this? Jesus. Just, just, it's the just, benevolent international. Do you know what? It's like kind of the definition of communism. Like, oh, it's just shared resources for evil. Oh, my God. Like, true. not that communism is inherently evil, but just like. No, no, no. But- I imagine that Nixon is like a libertarian. Oh. And is like operating yeah. in this communist framework. God, I fucking hate libertarians. Uh, but that's what twelve-year-old boys want to be, isn't it? Yeah, because they're all like, I'm not oh, all twelve-year-old boys. But you know, no, <laughs> man. That- um, no, but it is this thing of like they go, oh, I'm I'm about personal responsibility, and when mm. you actually sort mm. of delve into it, what they're about is, oh, everyone else needs to be personally responsible, but I am inherently personally responsible, mm. but will take no responsibility mm. for anything. Mm-mm. They just want the individual. 
uh, personal responsibility to be able to insult other people without consequence mm. is my yep. take on libertarianism. Yes. Oh, yeah, that freedom of speech, but not no. that, but also but not freedom from criticism. Freedom. <laughs> yeah, no, no, <laughs> I want my freedom of speech and your freedom of speech doesn't matter as much. <laughs> um, we really have gone off track. Uh, so- it's because I <laughs> hated it. <laughs> Um, so they kill Anya because yeah. th- they can now read her m- Oh, two of them can read her mind. She didn't make Buddy as strong because she didn't want Nixon to kill him because she also <laughs> is really she into nerdy guys. <laughs> no, no, so um, um, I'm a fucking nerd. Like, it's good on you if you're like, nerds don't struggle to get dates because no, there are nerdy no, this women. Idea that, that women are only like one particular type of man is, well, just stupid. It's, it's pain. Yeah, it's very disrespectful to women's choice. Uh, no, but th- it's that all this alpha mentality bullshit mm. is in there as well. It's like well, he uses that phrase alpha. He's not an alpha male. It's like technically no one is because it's a dumb phrase. Because we're not wolves. We're not wolves, and even that is a yeah. Flawed also, logic, has been you know. like debunked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Like talking to a our dog trader at one point, and I said, "Do we need to like establish ourselves as the alpha?" And she was just like, "No, you fucking idiot." No. <laughs> I was like, "I don't know." <laughs> no, 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 that's not how it works. She's like, um, just, just. You so know. yeah, they. Uh, so he, so he gathers all of these evil zombies together, kills them, or drugs. Oh, them. He drugs them and then turns them turns them to loyal to him by stabbing yeah. them or something i don't I know i don't really know um, um meanwhile then- after anya's died the trio finds a um oh a whole heap of other people who are also vax hunters and they're getting chased by death vaxes <laughs> and so he kills them but he has to kind of assert that he's the strongest so they all trust him and then are willing oh, to get no. booster shots <laughs> Oh, um, and then, I mean, and, and I'm sure other stuff happens in the bookends. I don't oh, know. No, I kind uh, of lost Anya, track. <laughs> Anya, when she was had her neck broken and was murdered, oh, she fell landed on, the vial on Nixon's of blood. Someone's blood, yeah. And now she's a zombie as well. Super zombie. And so she mm. creates a bunch of loyal zombies and escapes and is going to like kill Chuck and all his friends. Mm. And then um, go and meet Nixon. And yeah. And that's the end of the book. Afraid. And that's kind of the end of the book. It's really. Look, it God, was we must have sounded so bored in our, like, <laughs> <I think it's- laughs> rushed explanation. <laughs> no, no, no. And then it ended. <laughs> um, it was it was just, look, as you say, we were not the target audience. Um, oh, yeah, if you have a 12-year-old son and you're willing to have a conversation with him about, like, reading this and understanding or everything that's mm. fucked about it, he would probably mm. find it really funny. Probably would be quite interesting. Yeah, look, I reckon it would be funny. Mm. I mean, I read trashy novels when I'm, needing just escapism but this i mean i don't know that even though this was trashy it was just just wasn't for me mm. this, i really like b horror and mm. often these mm. problematic themes exist within it and there's lots of reasons for that yeah. um one of the big ones being that it often just gets ignored by senses and so is mm. you know maybe not going through the same rigorous process of <laughs> Hey, has someone considered this might be misinterpreted? Mm -hmm. Um, And I can kind of see that. I I think the book has potential. Like the like the the idea is sound. It's kind of it's got this. You know, there's some originality in there. It's doing like it's looking at this thing that's very current and making an interesting story about it. Mm -hmm. It just needs a really good editor. Just needs a really good edit. It really does because um, there there was just wasn't enough backstory. It was a bit too simplistic, and there we was know, heaps of exposition. That- there was heaps of exposition. We know that Chuck got these extra amazing powers, but we're not really provided with a good reason why that was the case. Um, I just don't really like anyone. I don't like anyone. I don't even like the women. They're just. Well, the women are one-dimensional uh, well, and exist to. Although, uh, but they, but you know, even I, I, I kind of liked Amber because you know she was no. She nonsense. stood up for herself. So and she, yeah, she she was, she yeah, she stuck up for herself. She was um, she, yeah, she just got shit done. 
without Jeez. complaining, but I just wonder whether that's um But then it was all that, framed in this but she's like because she's, she's, the, she's really hot, hot and she's girl? Yeah, she's hot and she's, she's been hot. vaccinated and now she's really into the nerdy guy. And again, mm. this is the thing that there are hot women, there are just women in general who are into nerdy men. Mm. Mm. And like creating this confected situation that you have to like trick them or like you know they have they have to have been genetically altered <laughs> to find nerdy guys attractive it's, like, it's like, not just about how people look it's not how many muscles you've got um it's, it's about connecting with someone connecting and mm. going hey we are both we have shared interests and mm, mm, I just, mm. it, it, it's it was just a bit yeah it's mm. really built on this idea that women are hardwired to be into a very certain kind of man. It's just not true. No. And I feel like it needs to be said, I once was out to lunch with someone, a group mm. of women, and mm. one of them was going to meet a guy from a dating app after mm. lunch. Mm -hmm. And she said he described himself as an alpha and another woman said, well, he'll never go down on you because alphas <laughs> don't eat pussy. And <laughs> that has been in my brain. I'm like, why is this not their brand? Is that living in your head rent tree? <laughs> Forever, because I just think if we all just, um, but maybe it's like it's a useful thing to know when men call themselves alphas to go, well, alphas don't eat pussy, so ignore him. But also, <laughs> do they know that this is their brand? They should. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't call yourself that. Women are just laughing at you. <laughs> oh, that's what they're afraid of. Oh. <laughs> don't kill me. <laughs> oh, 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 this got dark. <laughs> Anyway, so face masks. I'm going to give it a. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to blame the codeine for this. I'm going to give it a three. I found it boring, but I wasn't the audience. It wasn't badly written. It just needed a good edit um, and a bit more backstory and explanation as to how these amazing coincidences came about. Like a little bit more convincing. Um, I'm with you. I think it's a three. I think this has a tremendous amount of potential. It, it reads as if, and sometimes I give this feedback to students, like this is an early draft. This is the draft yes. that you send to it's a like friend a early draft. and say, yes. hey, this is my draft. You know, it's a lot of work mm. to go, but I'd mm. love to know what you think. And, mm. you know, some high level what do I need to do? Not detail mm. feedback yet. We're not ready for that. Mm. We want some high level, this is missing, I don't really yep. get this, this thing's not flowing well, that kind of thing. Mm. And I think, you know, with some work, maybe with a comedian co-writer. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's just... Yes. Uh, just actually make it funny. <laughs> uh, look... I we're not the audience. I think We're not the I, audience. I genuinely I believe I have some it. nephews who would think this is the funniest thing on earth. I have yeah. some brothers that would probably think this is the funniest thing on earth. <laughs> Incidentally, those them. nephews' fathers. Let me know what you think. What they think. <laughs> yeah. Are your brothers readers? Do they like reading? Yeah, some people are readers and others are less so. More watchers. I don't know. Oh, actually, I one of my brothers is quite mm. a prolific reader. Um, mm. which always surprised me when I found it out because we're the closest in age and mm. I never mm. sort of had that. But mm. he likes those epic fantasy novels. Like he's read all of the Game of Thrones books and, mm. 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 and insists I try and read them. And like They're very long. I read them. Which as a teenager, that, like, that is the type of book I read. Mm. I would, you know, devour David Eddings and Isabel Carmody mm. and mm. Sarah mm. Douglas. Mm. Um, mm. But as an adult, I just, no. I don't know how I did it. Well, you know, we grew out of things, or which our tastes change. And I, I still sort of enjoy the. Kind oh of, yeah, so do I. But <laughs> it's it's like, like you know, the Belgareth the Sorcerer book is mm. thousands of pages long. <laughs> I didn't have <laughs> I any friends. The energy for books of that length anymore. <laughs> That's why I listen to audio books. It's like I can do two things at once. I can read a book through my ears. Um, and do other like housework, or sewing, or walking, or riding mm. my bike, or whatever. I do um, that with audiobooks. And I go, I'll listen to a chapter a day, but I have to walk the dog for like two hours a day. So <laughs> <laughs> churn through it. It's like, oh, actually, no, I won't just listen to a yeah. chapter a day. Yeah. And I mean, uh, and if you want to get through books, you can just turn up the speed 1.25, mm. 1.5 if you 
feeling brave. <laughs> I know people who read books at or listen to audio books or podcasts at two speed. I was like, yeah, I- <laughs> with the chipmunks. <laughs> Because you can do the thing where you turn off pauses, like any silences, you switch it off. Oh. And you can, like, turn that on my podcast app, you can, Pocket mm. Cast. Um, <laughs> and you can turn that up to Mad Max is the setting. Oh, my God. And I have that switched on. And sometimes when I listen to our podcast and it's live, just go, it's oh, yeah, all working. Yeah. I'm like, I swear there was a pause there. It's because I've, like, cut it out. Yeah, right. <laughs> it, was yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it was funnier with the pause. Mm-hmm. Importantly, mm-hmm. we should get on to tell us what you think. <laughs> yes, tell us what you think. Oh, so, let, me go to, let me go to our notes. As okay. we said, a lot of potential. And we think, you know, if you want to like give it a read and, and have a look, it mm. it could do with, you know, a bit of a following and getting him a good uh, enough of a following yeah, to get I mean, an editor this, could this, help him. This, yeah, a good editor could really help him. This guy writes a lot of books. So, I. Uh, I mean, maybe similar this to Chuck like, Tingle. I'm not like, going to read anymore, but <laughs> no, similar to Chuck Tingle, but not mm. as good. Not as good. Chuck Tingle, I liked. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Chuck uh, Tingle was funny. I thought his books were funny. Yeah, they were really good. funny. Yes. Um. So yeah, tell us what you think. Email us at lowbrowlowdown at gmail dot com or share your thoughts at lowbrowlowdown on Twitter. Um, we are going to talk about next week's book. I don't know. <laughs> We like, do we do yet. the next one of these? <gasps> I don't know if I can. I'm not sure I can do it. I think Look, I'll, it, I'll have a quick is, skim. It is much then... longer than what we're used to. We're, and yeah. I think and what we're wanting like, at the moment. And my, like, my approach of going, oh, shit, I haven't read the book and it's the day. <laughs> like, <laughs> this was actually, like, I I had to do work and there were just sort of periods where I'm like, right, I'm taking 10 minutes and I'm reading some more. <laughs> and I had to, like, churn through it. It took, it took a while. I had Started on the week. Oh no, yeah, the weekend, and it was like, oh, I'm not enjoying this. And I just kept putting it down. Um, it felt like homework. It and did it's like, a bit. I don't want that. So look, let's not read this one. We'll have to. We'll have to choose. Yes. What well, we at want the moment, read. next week's episode in our run sheet says, "Who the fuck knows?" Um, oh, does he? <laughs> because we didn't. Oh, yeah, we didn't right. address yeah. that where we skipped <laughs> over Rita Rona. What is it? Rita Riley and Rona anxiety. Oh, because yeah. we read that and it was extremely moralizing. It really was. Um, and I'm not sure we were. It wasn't no. funny at all. We didn't even like. There was an episode that we didn't release because we didn't like the book, and we recorded the episode. We didn't even bother <laughs> recording the episode. This just not worth it. It just um, was. It was like it was subtle ridiculous. as a it sledgehammer. Like a, it's like a case study. Um, he yeah. is just someone who's taking. It was. It was like it was written by hygiene. a bureaucrat. Yeah. Oh my god! It was written by a bureaucrat. It yes. really was. Look and at, at the, the two end, extremes. Yes. Oh my goodness. There you That's go. exactly what it was. Maybe, um, I mean, fuck, we're both bureaucrats, so I didn't we enjoy it. Well, I, God, I've got to write some case studies myself, so um, <laughs> I just copy that one. Um, all right. So all right. I think we're done. Yeah. For the day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, um, everyone. Check it out. We'll see you next week. Something yeah. new to be There's a, something a new. surprise. <laughs> A corona surprise. Oh, God, no, not another one. No. (laughs) Bye, everyone. If you can, you won't turn into a zombie or a vampire. That's a promise. (laughs) (laughs) All right. See ya. See ya.